Hello and welcome to another Korean college scholastic ability test video. Recently, I have already uploaded one video on one of the challenging problems from the last year's CSAT. You can check the link in the description or on the top right corner of the video. But this year's CSAT is actually drawing very close. So in this video, I am going to present you one more challenging problem from the last year's CSAT. And this one is about calculus. So let us just read the problem. For a cubic function fx, whose leading coefficient is 1 over 2 and a real number t, define gt as the number of distinct real roots of the equation f prime x equals 0 in a closed interval t comma t plus 2. Then gt satisfies following conditions. a. For all real numbers a, the limit of gt as t approaches a from the right plus limit of gt where t approaches a from the left is less than or equal to 2 and b g of f1 equals g of f4 equals 2 and g of f0 equals 1. Then find f5. Okay, I think the most natural response after reading this problem would be, what the heck? Seriously, I think the most difficult part in the entire process of solving this problem is the beginning, that is, understanding the problem in the first place. I mean, there are some conditions given here and there, but they are written in a sort of confusing way, so I think I should explain the problem one more time in a bit more organized manner. Alright, so explaining the problem again, step by step, simply put, the problem can be set like this. Find the function fx that satisfies certain conditions, and here, I will summarize them as four conditions. Then, using that function, find the value of f5. Quite simple so far, right? Alright, so now let's take a look at those four conditions. The first one was quite easy to catch since it was right at the beginning of the problem. fx is a cubic function with leading coefficient 1 over 2. So in a simpler statement, we can just say that fx equals 1 over 2x cubed plus something. Now in order to address other three conditions, we must first define a function gt. As you've already seen, gt is defined as the number of distinct real roots of the equation f prime x equals 0 in a closed interval t comma t plus 2. We will take a closer look at this function gt later. So for now, even if this definition looks confusing, let's just move on. The remaining three conditions for our cubic function fx all involve this newly defined function gt. The first of them is, for all real numbers a, we have one sided limit here, the limit of gt as t approaches a from the right plus the limit of gt as t approaches a from the left is less than or equal to 2. The other two conditions are about the values of function g at specific values, and I would like to split them like this. g of f1 equals g of f4 equals 2 as the third condition, and g of f0 equals 1 as the fourth condition. Okay, so I have explained the problem one more time. I hope that this presentation helped you understand the problem a bit more clearly, because now we are really about to solve this problem. We have already dealt with the first condition, so the next condition that we should take a look at is obviously this second one, including gt and one-sided limits. What does this condition mean? This statement alone looks abstract, but a function can be visualized in a way we call the graph. So can we draw some kind of graphical meaning of this condition? Right, so let us take a closer look at gt. As we've already seen, gt is defined as the number of real roots of the equation f prime x equals 0 in the interval t comma t plus 2. Then we have this limit. The value of this limit depends on the value of a. So this entire thing is a function of a. So for the simpler expression, let us call this function ha. Then the second condition can be expressed as the value of the function ha is always less than or equal to 2. Now we already know that fx is a cubic function, 1 over 2x cubed plus something. This means that its derivative f prime x is a quadratic function with a positive leading coefficient. So the graph of f prime x is a convex parabola. Now let us take a look at one example where the graph of f prime x looks like this. This is the special case of repeated roots. The graph of f prime x just touches the x-axis at a single value alpha. In this case, what would be the graph of gt? Well first, we have this. gt is 0 when t is sufficiently small, because in that case, the interval t comma t plus 2 does not contain the root x equals alpha. But when t becomes alpha minus 2, the value of gt jumps to 1, 
because as you can see, the interval now contains the root x equals alpha. The value of gt remains 1 until t reaches alpha, since the interval still contains alpha, and beyond that, gt drops to 0. So this is the graph of gt in this case. Now let's think about the graph of ha. First, when a is less than alpha minus 2, ha is 0, because the limits from the right and the left are both 0. However, when a is exactly alpha minus 2, the limit from the left is still 0, but the limit from the right now becomes 1. Therefore, ha becomes 1. Then, immediately after that, ha jumps to 2, because in this interval, both of these limits now have the value of 1. Then, at a equals alpha, the value falls back to 1 again, and then it falls to 0 and go 1. So this is the graph of HA in this specific case. Okay, so we have successfully found the graphs of functions G and H in this specific case where f prime x equals 0 has a repeated root, that is, single distinct root alpha, but this cannot be the only possible case for f prime x. For example, if the graph of f prime x looks like this, that is, f prime x never touches the x-axis, then there exists no real roots of f prime x equals 0, hence the value of gt is always 0, and the value of ha is also always 0. Now, are there other cases for the graph of f prime x? Of course there are, and that is when the graph of f prime x meets the x-axis at two different points, alpha and beta, that is, the case of f prime x equals 0 having two distinct real roots. However, we cannot simply handle this one in single case, and we have to further divide into three separate cases, and we do that depending on this distance between alpha and beta. So the first case is when this distance is less than 2, and the second case is when this distance is exactly 2, so that beta equals alpha plus 2, and the third case is when this distance is greater than 2. So let us examine these three cases. First, when the distance between alpha and beta is less than 2, now we have the interval where gt can have the value of 2. This means that the interval of length 2 can now contain both roots, alpha and beta. And for HA, now you can see that HA can have values of not only 1 and 2, but also 3 and 4. For example, when A is in this point, both limits have the value of 2, hence HA becomes 4. Moving on to the case where the distance between alpha and beta is exactly 2, if we examine the graph of GT in a similar manner, you can see that GT can still have the value of 2, but only at a single point, t equals alpha. And for the graph of ha, now the value of ha can only go up to 2. Notice that the value at a equals alpha is also 2, because the limit from the right is 1, and the limit from the left is also 1. Now for the final case, where this distance is greater than 2, gt can now only have a maximum value of 1, and actually goes down to 0 in the middle, and for HA, the graph now looks like this, which at this point shouldn't be that hard to understand. So if we actually summarize every single possible case, we obtain this result. Now before we go any further, let's just take a time to appreciate how beautiful this is. I mean, so beautiful. With this complete picture for all cases, now we have to find out in which case does our given fx fit into. So let us take a look at the remaining conditions involving function g. The second condition implies that the value of ha cannot exceed 2, but the third condition implies that function gt must have a value of 2 at certain point. So back to our summary here, can you find out the case where these previously mentioned conditions hold? Well, it's this case, right? The case where the distance between alpha and beta are exactly 2. It is this case where the value of ha does not exceed 2, so that this limit condition is satisfied. And it is this case where gt has a value of 2 at some point, 
so that this condition can be satisfied. So we have found the correct case. Now with this picture, let us try to find out fx. So far, we know that fx can be expressed like this, so its derivative can be expressed like this. But here we have found that this distance is exactly 2, which means the quadratic equation f'x equals 0 has two roots, which are alpha and alpha plus 2. Therefore, we can express f'x as leading coefficient 3 over 2 times x minus alpha times x minus alpha minus 2. And by expanding, we obtain 3 over 2x squared plus 3 over 2 minus 2 alpha minus 2x plus 3 over 2 alpha squared plus 2 alpha. Therefore, fx can be expressed as by integrating the derivative, 1 over 2x cubed plus 3 over 2 minus alpha minus 1x squared plus 3 over 2 alpha squared plus 2 alpha x, and of course, the constant c. So we have this. Next, we have to use these two yet unused conditions regarding the values of gt. Here, let's use the third one. Note that gt can have a value of 2 at t equals f1 and f4, but from this graph, gt can only have a value of 2 at t equals alpha. This means that both f1 and f4 must be alpha. Using this obtained expression for fx, this can be expressed as so this is f1 and this is f4 and they must all equal to alpha. If we simplify each side, we have 3 over 2 alpha square plus 3 over 2 alpha minus 1 plus c here and 6 alpha square minus 12 alpha plus 6 plus c here equals alpha. Let us take a look at this part first. So by deleting c and moving everything onto the right, we obtain 9 over 2 alpha square minus 27 over 2 alpha plus 9 equals 0. We can divide both sides by 9 and multiply 2 to obtain alpha square minus 3 alpha plus 2 equals 0. So alpha minus 1 times alpha minus 2 equals 0. Therefore alpha equals 1 or 2. Now we still haven't used this equals a part yet, and we can use that part to obtain c. So when alpha equals 1, this part becomes 2 plus c equals 1, therefore c equals minus 1. When alpha equals 2, then we have 8 plus c equals 2, therefore c equals minus 6. Alright, so we have obtained these possible values. So this alpha can be either 1 or 2. Now it's time to take a look at our final condition, g of f0 equals 1. From this graph of gt, you can see that gt can have a value of 1 only if its t value is within the distance 2 from alpha. That is, this f0 must be within this range. Now from our previously obtained expression of fx, we know that c is simply f0. Therefore, this inequality means that c must be within this range. If we take a look at our candidates, we can see that in the second case, a and c are apart by distance of 8, hence invalid, and only the first case satisfy our range condition. Therefore, we have alpha equals 1 and c equals minus 1. And using this, we have our function fx, 1 over 2x cubed minus 3x squared plus 9 over 2x minus 1. And finally, with this function, we can calculate f5, which is 9. And this is our final answer, the value of f5. So this was a quite interesting problem. We have found a cubic function using the clues given at the problem, which look very confusing at first, but actually not that confusing once you can interpret the meaning of these conditions. I think there are two major important steps in solving this problem. The first part is to interpret the meaning of this definition of gt, 
And this condition, where we define the HA, allowing us to obtain this big picture. And the second part is to interpret the meaning of this condition, which combined with this range of the limit, allowing us to narrow down the cases into this single specific case. And that's all for this video. I have covered CSAT problems twice in a row, so in my next video, I am going to cover something other than CSAT, which means just a normal problem solving video. Please hit that like and subscribe to enjoy other interesting math videos in my channel, and I will see you in another video.